everyone, welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 and this video will be previewing day one of the Punchestown Festival, the last um, major jumps festival of the spring. It's always a very good festival, it's been a good one as well. The last couple of years we've been doing uh, this YouTube channel, especially last year, was very um, fantastic for us. We had so many good price winners. I think on the first day we had a 16 to 1 shot. Also as well we had a couple of 20, 25 to 1 winners in the end and a lot of decent uh, each way shouts from uh, some really good juicy prices and a lot of winners along the way. So hopefully we can have another good stellar uh, Punchestown uh, festival this year with the Punchestown and hopefully uh, we can give you um, some nice winners across the week and we'll be doing videos for all five days of the Punchers Festival. So without further ado, we'll get straight into the business end of things. And it all starts tomorrow at 3.40. And we're going with a horse here called Blue Templar. Now this um, is for horses uh, running cross country races, point to point races. And I'm going with a horse here called Blue Templar. He's 11 of four but makes at the moment, trained by Edna Bulger, who's got a fantastic record in this race. He employs uh, an amateur rider tomorrow in the shape of Mr. R.W. Barron, claiming a ha handy seven pounds off. Now this horse, um, in the last uh, couple of years, has uh, actually made the frame in this race. In 2017, he finished third, and then he went one better last year. Uh, in 2018 to finish second. Hopefully he can go one better tomorrow. Compared to some of the other horses in this um, in this race, he's got probably some of the classiest form on paper and also as well some race fitness. The other Edna Bulger horse, who's actually been chosen by Derek O'Connor, I think might just need that run. And I just think Blue Templar tomorrow, still only eight years old, getting um, seven pounds as well from the other Edna Bulger horse. He's got a lot more things in his favour tomorrow and he's going to be our opening leg um, of the Punchtown Festival on day one. We then go uh, for the second race where it gets a bit more better uh, with the action in terms of the class aspect of things. And I think Classical Dream tomorrow, even though he is a very um, worthy favourite, obviously he won the Supreme, very good style last time. I think he's a bit too short for my liking and I think that race was actually a little bit... Um, of a Madeline race and I, I think um, that race probably won't be worth too much in future and I think some of the horses that were in behind that day didn't give their run in the race. Classical Dream though to be fair Ruby Welsh did a masterclass on him and he won the race very well but I just think tomorrow Felix Deji is the one you want to be on here. I think he's a good each way bet to nothing. He's 6-1 to one with bookmakers at the moment. Trained by Gordon Elliott. Jack Kennedy's booked for the ride. He absolutely loves Punches Town and he's won twice at the track here from free starts so that's definitely a massive positive for him. Also as well there's going to be some rain forecast overnight into the morning and that definitely played to his strengths. He's come on from that Supreme where he finished behind Classical Dream when he went on to beat Aramon winning the grade one um, novice hurdle at, Ain at Aintree. Also as well I think at that time uh, when it did uh, come to uh, the Cheltenham Festival the Gordon Elliott team weren't quite up to their best and they had quite a few flops which obviously all the top trains are going to get but I just think they had a bit more a bit, few more um high profile flops than the others and I think Felix Deji tomorrow has got a lot in his favour going back this way around should definitely suit him and I just think at the prices 6-1 to one is a bit of a ridiculous price I could definitely see him going off a lot shorter tomorrow I could see him going off less than 4-1 to one. And I think he's a cracking each way bet tomorrow with conditions in his favour and a good track record so he's going to be our selection there we then go to the 4.55 and I actually thought that handicap tomorrow in this uh, for this race tomorrow was quite a competitive affair but one I thought was a bit of a big price and a cracking each way bet is a horse called Man of Plenty. Now he is getting on a bit, he's 10 years old, but he's 25 to 1 with bookmakers tomorrow. Trained by Sophie Leach, British trainer, and Connor Brace claims a handy £7. He's been riding out with the likes of uh, Fergal O'Brien and also as well Nicky Henderson, where he gave him the leg up in the Scottish Champion hurdle on the Dyna Blue. So Man of Plenty, being ridden by Connor Brace tomorrow, shouldn't be too uh, overwhelming for the jockey. He's definitely up to it. Now this horse actually finished second at the Punchtown Festival and a handicap over slightly further, over two and a half miles and dropping back to two miles tomorrow with a bit of um, rain around uh, overnight like I said into tomorrow morning will definitely play to his strengths he likes heavy testing conditions he um, ran well too far last time I think he ran in the stairs hurdle at the Cheltenham Festival but he's back down to a good mark he won a listed um, handicap at Sandown earlier in the year going this way round in testing conditions I think at 25 to 1 carrying a nice low race and weight getting plenty of weight from some of his rivals tomorrow extra places out there as well to be had by the bookmaker such as Skybet this 
this could definitely be a bit of a gamble in the race tomorrow. And we know he handles the track. And I just think tomorrow he's going to get a good ride. He might not win, but I think he should be there or thereabouts. And he's just too much of a bigger price for me to ignore. So he's going to be our selection in that race there. We then go to the 5.30 for arguably the best race of the day. Min taking on Underso. And I'm actually going to side with Underso here. He's coming in here a lot more fresher. He's 10 to 3 but makers at the moment. Trained by Willie Mullins. The choice of Paul Townend tomorrow. I actually won this race last year. And again, like I said, any rain that falls overnight, which should uh, be quite a bit, and hopefully it does get him to the ground, will definitely play to his strengths. He likes to run from the front. He's very prominent. He's only had two runs this year, which came behind Altior um, in the Tingle Creek. And then also as well um, at the Cheltenham Festival when he finished fifth in the Rhino. I think he's um, been a little bit forgotten about. And I just think tomorrow is definitely... Um, you shouldn't be underestimating him. And I just think it's going to be an interesting race tomorrow. I think the ground will definitely play to his conditions compared to Min, who, even though he does like soft ground, I just think Undersur's stamina could definitely serve him in good stead tomorrow. And he'd just be my pick on the prices. I think even at 10 3, if you wanted to back him each way, that's not a ridiculous bet. We then um, go to uh, one of the bumper races tomorrow, the 605. And this is. Uh, this is a horrible race, but I'm going with a horse that I hope I can pronounce right, called Feaston de Beacon. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Seven or two bookmakers at the moment, trained by Robert Tyner and uh, Derek O'Connor's book for the ride tomorrow. This year, I've won the race in 2016 and 2017. Derek O'Connor actually rode um, for Robert Tyner in this race, the winner in 2017. So they know how to do the job together. This horse um, is by Secret Singer and has got a very interesting pedigree related to quite a few bumper and flat horses over in France. So I just think with Connections doing well in this race, one they target each year, it's a, it's a hard race to really back anything in, but he would be my selection there um, considering what's gone before. There are a few other interesting runners, but I just think this horse being prominent in the market tomorrow, he looks like he's been targeted for the race, has got a lot in his favour and he's going to be my selection there. We then go back to a bit more of the class action uh, for the 6.40 and I think Get a Bird is a massive price tomorrow. 6-1 to one with some firms at the moment. He's good each way bet. Trained by Willie Mullins. Ruby Welsh but for the ride. Again, coming in here fresher than most. Finished um, second. <coughs> Sorry there. Finished second last time out at... Um, I think it was Limerick it was behind uh, Hardline where he disappointed that day. But he's going to be coming in, like I said, a lot fresher compared to some of his other rivals tomorrow where he meets the likes of... Um, Delta work and also as well Plutard. I think uh, get a bird tomorrow going this way around. It definitely suited me. One here on Chase debut as well. And his form of the Chase debuts worked out really well. The third place horse, Moon over Germany, won a very nice handicap at the Aintree Festival. And I just think he's got a lot in his favour tomorrow. And I definitely think he'll go off quite short tomorrow. And he'll probably go off something like 3 1, or could even be shorter on the day. So I think get a bird tomorrow has got a good chance going this way around. And maybe just the fact that he hasn't had a hard season could serve him in good stead and also as well he'll like a bit of juice in the ground we then go with our final selection uh, for the 7.15 with a horse called Front View 5-2 bookmakers at the moment uh, trained by Joseph O'Brien Derek O'Connor but for the ride right tomorrow I think he's going to have a good day tomorrow Derek O'Connor finished second behind Blue Sari uh, when they met on the Thiestes meeting at Gorham Park on debut and he was expected to win that day but um, unfortunately he just found Blue Sari too good however he was in the process of running a really good race the next time out at Nace when he was unlucky to be brought down and I just think tomorrow he's a class horse in the race and if he's turning in with a with a good chance, I think he should definitely uh, stay on and be probably the most likely winner of the race. And he's going to be our selection for the last race at Punchestown tomorrow. So hopefully we can uh, give you some winners for day one of the Punchestown Festival. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe subscribe button for more videos here on uh, my YouTube channel at LuckyLoads15. You can also follow me on Twitter as well. My handle is at LuckyLoads15. And that's all I've got to say. So please go responsibly. Hopefully we can have some winners tomorrow. And we'll be seeing you soon. Thank you.